So it's no surprise that this week's episode of My Hero Academia was once again a very thrilling and exhilarating episode, but there was some interesting twists I was not expecting. I mean, last week, yes, we did see that one of the villains was looking for Bakugo, but I didn't expect that all of the villains were. Like, I expected that this guy, for whatever reason, had a beef or just saw him at the sports festival and said, I want to fight this guy. But it's interesting how they're all actively looking for Bakugo, and it seems like they almost want to recruit Bakugo, and based on some of the dialogue from the head honcho of the group here, it almost seems like he believes that he can convince Bakugo to join the dark side. That's the impression I got from it. But I feel like Bakugo is in that run of the mill who would transfer to the dark side. You expect someone of his persona would, but I feel like Bakugo has kind of developed as a personality enough that he wouldn't just willingly go over to the dark side and would kick ass to just say, I'm not going to join your stupid little gang even though these guys are a bunch of idiots that I'm with, they're my group of idiots. I feel like that's how it would go down with Bakugo, but we'll have to wait and see. But it was definitely a very interesting turn of events, because I really just figured it was just one of the villains had his own personal reasons to go for Bakugo, and that was an unexpected twist that I really am looking forward to seeing how Bakugo will kind of handle that, because he's a very hot-headed individual, and I've heard that this arc really does establish Bakugo as a fan favorite. I've always really liked Bakugo. He's always been a very thrilling and entertaining personality, but I can't wait to see where he goes this arc here. It's going to be very exciting. And seeing Eraserhead in action is always a breath of fresh air. We don't see him enough fight villains or anything like that. So it's always awesome to see him kick a little ass. Granted, he didn't kick a lot of ass before that villain kind of got away, but it was still nice to see. But I actually forgot about the whole idea that they kind of made saying like, you won't use your quirks against the enemy unless given permission. So I actually forgot about that little detail and how that Eraserhead actually has to give the message saying like, okay, give this message to the girl who can like put the message in everyone's head because there is too many here. You guys are gonna have to fight too. So I actually forgot about that because obviously there's certain characters who would just use their powers no matter what, because like Deku, he's not gonna wait, say like, okay, hey, big guy, I need to go ask my teacher if I can use my powers against you. Can you just hold up here while, and just don't kill the little kid over here. Can you do that for me? Obviously, he's not going to do that. He's going to risk his life, and he's going to risk getting expelled or anything like that. So that's Deku. Now, obviously, like, Eraserhead knows he has to punish him for it, but I feel like also he's proud of Deku. I feel like there is that proudness there, but obviously all the other students, they're not like Deku. There's plenty of kind of maybe B-side students who wouldn't use their powers without that permission, so I do actually like that he has to give that. And when you do hear that message just overlay to all of their minds, it honestly was a really cool moment and really was like, okay... Things hopefully will get a little bit better here. Obviously, you know things are going to get worse, but at the same time, it gave you that kind of spark of hope, and I really, really enjoyed that. And when it comes to the actual villains, I have to say, minus one of the characters, they're pretty damn entertaining. Like, one of the characters is that goofy, gimmicky, whatever. But all the other characters, they feel like they're going to be very entertaining, and I'm very interested in seeing more of them. Not to mention that even if they fail here, it's interesting the ideology and the kind of mentality they have going in here because the boss trusts that they can get the job done, but even if they don't get the job done, it will still be a victory in itself. And I really do like the mindset there, but also how one of the villains spares Deku's life because Stain and what he said, he believes that he's the embodiment of a true hero and he's not worth killing. So I do like how Stain's ideology is transferring over into this season and how Stain the hero killer wasn't this throwaway character his presence has a lasting effect on this and obviously the league of villains and that's very very interesting but when we were fighting the like mustard gas user the one who can seemingly put up mustard gas and he uses a revolver because he can't fight with his own two fists there how it was going down was kind of unexpected because i expected you know we have this hot-headed guy who can just turn into metal i figured that he was counting down the bullets he had eight shots in the revolver i figured like when he was down kind of getting shot he was waiting for the bullets to go out and then he was going to hit him, but he really couldn't do anything. So I like how there was a team effort there with the other girl who could seemingly just make her hands extremely big and kind of gets rid of the gas so then we could have that one last hit there. And I thought it was actually pretty interesting how characters we might not necessarily think we're going to care about, they actually made the scene very impactful, made me someone who, like at the start, I was like, okay, we're not focusing on the core cast here. I'm a little, I'm a little iffy, like... Is this going to be entertaining? But it was actually thrilling because I thought we could have a death here. Like, 
there is a revolver, and even though he's metal, he can't breathe, so he can't reinforce his metal body there. I was like, this guy's gonna die, and I really don't want him to die, so I like how he overcame that and how the two work together, and how it's showing that it's not just Deku who can be a hero, they all can be if they put their mind to it and their quirks to it, obviously, and I really like that. But to actually see Dark Shadow go insane at the end, that was probably the most unexpected moment in the episode, because... I actually forgot about that, that if there is enough darkness, essentially he can go insane. And to see a guy get kind of swarmed by his own quirk and just telling everyone to get out of there, like, that's probably the most exciting aspect to the season right now. Like, I can't wait to see how Dark Shadow is going to be overcome, and if this is going to be a moment where Tokiyami can actually overcome one of his main obstacles with his quirk and actually overcome it and make his quirk stronger because of it. Because if he can master his quirk and the limitations that it holds, he would be really a damn fine powerhouse for the team there. And that's completely unexpected and I really like that. And I like how this episode, for as much as it had going on, it actually felt pretty damn well balanced. Like, for all the pain and suffering that our boy Deku's been going through here, like seeing just how broken he is, but he's still, he's kind of on an adrenaline rush right now. He, he's kind of on this little bit of a high, like he kind of saved the day, but he's still willing to run around, kick people in the face, even though his arms are shattered. And this is going to have a lasting effect. I mean, the nurse who keeps healing Deku has said, the more you do injuries like this, I'm not going to be able to heal you forever. So I do expect there's going to be some lasting injuries here, but Deku isn't going to run away and get patched up. He needs to still work. He's one of their best fighters, even with two broken arms. He could still power up his legs as long as he doesn't break those too. So I'm interested to see just how much farther Deku is going to push himself and break himself before ultimately getting healed up. But obviously, Bakyo is the biggest wild card right now in terms of what's going to happen with him against the villains. That's going to be very exciting to see. Overall, there was a lot of emotion in this episode, and I'm really excited. Like, this arc could easily surpass last season for me. And obviously, I know manga readers has, have been saying that this season is going to be even better. But as an anime original, I'm very excited to see where this is going and how, even though this has been very action-oriented, there's a lot of emotion conveyed through so much of the dialogue, the facial expressions, the voice acting. You're really making the viewer care about these characters even more than we already did. And for me, caring about characters I didn't think I was going to care about, I'm really liking this episode and arc overall. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. What did you think of this episode? Manga readers, anime originals, let me know what you're feeling. And if you enjoyed the video, remember to leave a like. And if you're new, also be sure to subscribe. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.